All right, so this is uh, part two of the outline of this Walt Whitman picture. What I'm gonna do, basically in the last video, I outlined him a little bit more because what we have here, we have this really exact picture of Walt Whitman and it was a line demonstration from quite a while back. Some of you guys weren't even here. It's been sitting on the wall for a while and I've just not enjoyed it because it had, didn't have a unity to it. So last time I threw this solid outline around all of the functional part of the outline. And in places like this, the solid outline maybe makes it look a little wonky, right? Because there's not really, there's not really that strong out here. Like this line on the inside is stronger than this one. So it doesn't maybe quite feel right. However, it does unify the drawing here, which is, which is great. So another level of consideration here is what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to try to keep this outline unified while maybe getting a little more specific about what it does in certain areas. I'm going to use thinner lines. I'm going to use thicker lines. I'm going to use more specific lines per part just to get it to kind of read right. And then after, after the outline, the next consideration is like, what is the inside form doing? So if this is the outline of the entire head, which I have, then are there inside shadow lines or are there inside lines, um, are there inside lines of overlappings that I need to pay attention to? And short answer is yes. The hair is overlapping this ovoid shape. The nose is overlapping the ovoid shape. You know, so there's other layers and things to consider here. So let's uh, let's kind of jump in here, and I'm going to continue with my demo here. So basically, what I'm going to do is start with what I brought up over here. Is I'm going to maybe make this a little stronger here. And it's a little darker and maybe a little thicker here, so I can get away with this, this weighted line here a little stronger. Over here, if this is fading out, maybe I can let it fade a little bit. I'm still keeping this in line, but now it's continuous. You see how now it's not as powerful? And really, I'm letting the material tell me what to do here. So if I have an inside line for this head, I'm going to... I'm going to give him a head, basically, because he needs one. So see how now I've, I've given a little bit of integrity to this outline, and I've made this overlapping happen. Does that kind of, you guys kind of see what's, what's happening there? Wow, what a difference. Like, mm -hmm. now I can relax. Like, honestly, I could just relax on that one thing alone because it's been <laughs> bothering me for days. Okay, but let's include the shadow line in here. So if I have this little shadow line working my way up here, this is why we break it into parts, because now I can kind of segment this shadow line. I'm giving it a little weight because it is a shadow line and it has some weight. So I can build this little part up here. And keep in mind, I'm talking and demoing, so this is maybe not going to be exact exact, but it's getting the point across. So that's the point here. Okay, so we're doing that on the inside here. I'm gonna give a little weight to this shadow line in here. And maybe even a little character to show he's got this little ruddy skin. Maybe these are ingrown hairs. Maybe they're, I don't know, maybe he's got rosacea. Maybe he's drunk, he's been outside. It's Walt Whitman, God only knows, right? That's his character. But well, now I get a little bit of that ruddiness and I'm still in line, I'm not shading. Okay, the end of this, I got, I'm gonna build up this little scrappy character of this beard interacting with the shadow line. Now this curves around here and I am not shading. I am playing with line quality mm -hmm. to imitate what's in there. Um, there is not a, there's not like a big book of shading that's like, oh, now you have a beard, now you do this. Uh, I, w I so totally wish there was. And I know if you guys are realist you want that book too but a lot of times you're just following the material so there's no end to what you can do when you're following the material and being diligent with it 
But basically I'm building the shadow lines and anywhere there's an overlapping, I'm building it. And just to keep this really kind of razor simple, the outline is the entire thing. We need to account for that. The second biggest outline, as we oftentimes talk about in class, it's basically the head. The ovoid shape of the head is our next big shape. So I'm just gonna arbitrarily throw in a head shape under here because, not arbitrarily, I'm gonna use what's in here to do it, but I want to show you the effect of unification that's gonna happen in seconds when I do this. And notice I'm not, I'm not strong arming these lines. They're in there and I'm making them clear, but I'm making them a little soft. So look at the softness on the side of my pencil here. I'm using the side of the pencil. I'm not gouging in this way. We're not, we're not finishing lines. I'm just kind of, I'm caressing my drawing. Imagine I'm sculpting and I'm just kind of softly doing this with it. That's really what's happening here. So as this beard touches the head, like I said, he needs a head. And I need to show the side of that beard coming up. But we're, we're trying to, I'm trying to make some integrity about this head shape. That's the point of this. So while I'm doing that, see this line here? There's a strong line for this shadow here. I'm going to strengthen that a little bit because it's going to strengthen my ovoid shape. And it's naturally occurring. I'm not making up that line. Like, see how this brings us around now? Again, I'm not making anything up. I'm just accentuating what's in there to, to make them feel round. Because the tendency with something like this is it would feel patchy if you just put a bunch of things in there. All right, let's bring this down too. There's this little line here I can kind of bring under and caress. The, the naturally occurring features in here are giving us this roundness. It's giving us this thing. Down here where his um, chin would end, oh, well, there's a little cleft there. The hair comes underneath here and then it pops out where the chin would be, and then it comes back down, and then it makes a little fold there, and then the hair is growing underneath. This isn't an accident. It's truly not an accident. It's just following the forms of the head. So this is great, so we're gonna use this. Um, this thing on the side here, it actually follows that too. See how this kind of echoes? Look at my pencil. I'm not doing hard lines on this. I'm doing soft lines because this is soft. It's the hair. It's like fluffy. So I can kind of get away with this here. Uh, this little fluffy thing's coming down here. I like saying fluffy. <laughs> All right, good. Wow. Now it's, now it's got this curve going. I'm actually surprising myself how well this is turning out. Because um, even in my even following my own devices, I might get lost in middle detail and kind of float around in a meandering sea of despair and wondering what to do. Uh, but I'm kind of forcing myself to stay on a couple of tracks here. One is keeping an outline going, and two, how do we work it into the the inside shapes in a smooth way? All right, so let's continue with this. I'm going to do an outline here. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to strengthen these dark outlines a little bit and stay on character. So as I'm working under, I'm just trying to hit this, what this shape is doing. So see this beard shape, it works, it makes this little curly cue as it comes down. We can effectively just do the whole thing right now because we're trying to mask the thing and get it in. This isn't exact time, we're in medium shape time. So I'm drawing medium shapes. Notice I have not shaded anything yet. And trust me, I have wanted to just blast some value in here. So for all you uh, value freaks out there that just wanna you know, stick value all over everything and smudge everything into oblivion, like I'm keeping this very controlled so that when I do go to shade, like we're gonna already be, we're gonna be ready for the show, honestly. And if you do the line quality right here, it'll look like shading. Doesn't it look like shading? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's already looking shading, like there's shading happening and I've literally put no shading in. All I'm doing is following character, total character driven right now. And I am being disciplined and I am following rules. Okay, outline, inside shapes. That's my rule. I'm only doing those two. 
and by the way, that's not really my rule. I'm just keeping it on track here. I didn't invent uh, outlines and shapes. If I did, I would be great because then I could charge everybody every time they used one. But that's not happening. All right, so we're doing that, wrapping around. Oh yeah, I want to get a little stronger shape down here. Okay. Good. If I continue this with the uh, shirt there, I could actually overlap the shirt. That would actually make a lot of sense. Give that an outline. The shirt's a good thing to put in, uh, at least the collar anyway. I don't really care about the shirt because the shirt's pretty boring and like whatever. But um, from the standpoint of what it's doing in the picture, it's offering a geometric texture that doesn't exist up here. So his, uh, his kind of greasy hair up here is one texture, the beard is another, the skin, <coughs> the skin is another, some of the folds in the eye kind of have their own little thing happening here, but then the shirt's another thing altogether, which is a good reason to actually put it in because you can use that as a, you know, as a thing. Um, I can go a lot of directions here. Does anybody have any questions while I'm doing here? Because I'm going to try to close the loop here and kind of move on, but this is the basic idea. And this is a place everyone gets to when they're drawing at some point. Is like, how do I get out of the that first step? How far would you take it, John? Um, that's kind of open-ended. That's really up to you. If this is a realistic drawing, you're, you're doing everything. 